have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You may be seated. How often have you had to have a difficult conversation with someone when you know you don't have the power to affect change? This is the dilemma Nathan has in this morning's text. To back up a bit, David has an affair with Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, who's not actually named, just referred to as Uriah's wife. Not sure how that would fly in today's society. I would just be Stephen Scanlon's wife, not Ingrid Scanlon. Although people may not know me, but when I say the hot dog guy is my husband, they sure know who he is. <laughs> anyway, David spots Bathsheba from his balcony, likes what he sees, and has her brought to the palace where he has an affair with her and she becomes pregnant. David then tries to get Uriah to sleep with his wife, so it looks like the baby is Uriah's, but Uriah refuses because he feels that the rest of the army is sleeping in the dirt and fighting for their beliefs, so he should not get the comforts that they don't. After Uriah refuses to sleep with his wife, David engineers a way for Uriah to be killed in battle, which is where today's text begins. Once Uriah is dead and the mourning period is over, perhaps a few weeks, David brings Bathsheba to his house and she has his baby. However, the Lord does not like what David has done, and rightfully so, I would have to agree. I mean, there's nothing good about sleeping with another man's wife, getting her pregnant, and then having the man killed and taking his wife for your own, so no one finds out about the affair to begin with. Sounds like a story out of People Magazine, doesn't it? Or fodder for Jerry Springer. Up next, man has an affair with another man's wife and then has the husband killed so he can have the wife. At any rate, the Lord sends Nathan to tell David that he, the Lord, is displeased with his actions. Nathan has to figure out how to tell David that the Lord is not happy with his behavior. This is where the power comes in. Nathan really has no power over David. He is just the messenger, as it were. Nathan tells David a parable about two men, one rich, one poor. And the rich man takes the poor man one little lamb and kills it to feed to dinner guests. The Lord gave David many things, but David still took more. And in killing Uriah and taking his wife, he was like the rich man taking the lamb from the poor man. I know in my work life, I have to have conversations with staff all the time about difficult stuff, even though I'm not their manager and really have no authority over them. Here's an example. I am a staff scheduler, which means I'm responsible for making sure we have adequate staffing levels 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It's a lot of staff and a lot of shifts, <clears throat> but technically it's not my staff. I schedule them. I'm responsible for their payroll, approving their vacations, etc. But they don't report to me. They have a manager for that. Let's say Susan, not her real name, is a CNA, a certified nursing assistant. She works the 11 to 7 shift overnight. She's supposed to arrive at 10.45 p.m., but many times she doesn't arrive until after 11, sometimes as late as 11.30. I can say to her until I'm blue in the face, Susan, you really need to be on time. It throws off all the other staff when you're late. But until her manager has that conversation with her and takes corrective action, nothing I do or say will result in any change. Now I can report her to her manager, but then it's up to the manager to take the corrective action or not. So I have to have the conversation, but at the same time, I don't have the power to initiate the change. Much like Nathan, who is tasked with telling David that the Lord is displeased, but has no power to actually change the situation. He's trying to make David understand that he has to respect other people's relationships and not just take what he wants because he sees it and likes it and decides to have it. It would seem that Nathan is successful in delivering the Lord's message to David, even though he is not the one with the power. 
When he tells the story about the poor man's lamb and David condemns the rich man, Nathan tells him, you are that man. He has forced David to see that one does not just take something from another person just because he sees it and likes it. It's one of the first rules we learn as a child. Share your toys, play nice in the sandbox, don't take what doesn't belong to you. And for those of us who may doubt we can instigate change, even if we don't have the power, let us not forget Greta Thunberg, the teenage activist from Sweden, who has challenged world leaders with taking action regarding climate change. In 2018, at the age of 15, she addressed the United Nations Climate Change Conference, and in 2019, she attended the UN Climate, change, Climate Action Summit here in America. Was Nathan successful in delivering the Lord's message, even though he didn't have the power to change? I think so. He forced David to look at his actions, and David even came up with a punishment for the rich man in the parable. I would call that success. I leave you with this question. What can we do in our lives to affect change, even if we don't have the power? Are there things we could do, questions we could ask, people we could talk with to make changes, big or small, even if we don't have the ultimate power to make that change? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.